look at. First of all, we'll, we'll go over a couple slides here before we get started. Yes. This is just the introduction slide. So we're doing the uh, 42, 600 and 70, 600 uh, series aircraft. Um, uh, we can go on, yes. And today's uh, yeah, presentation will be focused on avionics. Um, unlike the last times, uh, I won't use slides, but this time uh, show you a bit uh, in the actual live aircraft on which I have here on my PC. <clears throat> All right, we'll go over to your screen. There we go. Okay. So first, let's have a look ar around the cockpit. This is how it looks. I have to move it a bit slowly so it doesn't stutter too much. And uh, what I want to show you today is uh, a part of the of something that's quite unique in the ATR compared compared to many other aircraft, and that's the the avionics, that's the uh, the displays, and uh, specifically. So let's start with the multifunction display. This is just the normal uh, normal mode it shows in. But what you can see, can see down here is the so-called virtual control panel. This allows quite a few things. It's controlled by this uh, panel below the, the MCDU. So uh, you can go on and, for example, uh, enter a new frequency here, press enter, uh, and then also swap it left and right. Um, to make this easier, because uh, if you look like look uh, at the cockpit like this, you you can't see the uh, the panel really. So we also um, added a way to or a click interface to uh, allow selecting things uh, on and uh, clicking buttons on the on the PFD itself uh, MFD itself. So. They have several modes for this. For example, you we have the, the communications mode with the COM frequencies, uh, the navigation mode, which uh, also allows entering uh, VR, ILS, and ADF frequencies. Um, you can select the auto-tuning or deselect the auto-tuning here. Uh, one free. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I should use the right right instrument. <laughs> okay. And uh, the same for, for the ADF, NDB. Then we have... Um, what is uh, controlled on using usually controlled via an EFIS panel up on the glare shield, uh, the display of airports and uh, nav aids on the on the moving map. This is um, done through the virtual control panel on the uh, on the ATR. Um, we have the terrain display. This is uh, Fuerteventura Island, and uh, to the right, uh, it's uh, it's mountainous. So um, this this part is shown red to us. Um, the same the the TCAS options can be set here, and finally, for the the primary flight display, the synthetic vision system which can be switched on and off, uh, just as you want. Many prefer the, the common, uh, the conventional way. Um, some will you want to use this. And this uh, sector here, this arc here, is the, uh, the field of view that you see. Okay. The third or last uh, button that which con which is controlled by the ND controls is transponder and TCAS settings, which can also be, be set here. 
Now, um, the um, the MFD does not only show the ND; it also is serves as a system display. Means it um, shows you all the all the uh, separate systems on the aircraft. In this case, hydraulics and AC wild. AC wild is something again ATR specific. It's a generator based on the uh, propeller turning, so it doesn't uh, doesn't deliver a, 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 a stable frequency power. It's uh, that's why they call it AC wild. Um, this is used to drive the hydraulics pumps, as you can see here, the propellers through the hydraulics pump and the, these serve those systems. The same again, and this car, this time the the secondary engine display. The primary is is always visible on the mis middle display. Um, cabin temperature, air condition, um, and um, oxygen supply. Then the AC and DC uh, power system. The ATR doesn't have um, DC generators, uh, AC generators like most aircraft. It has two DC power generators. And AC, stable frequency AC, is generated through inverters. Something special about this aircraft again. OK, that's back to the hydraulics. Then this is the aircraft's performance data. Um, it allows you to uh, to see what uh, what V one V R V two frequency you need, bleed on and off talks for for takeoff, uh, flap setting, and so on. You can select icing conditions here and get the uh, the appropriate speeds uh, and other settings. Then, so you say confirm. Uh, takeoff data, everything turns green, and you're ready to go. Okay. MISC, this is the most complex page. It's really not available. We couldn't find anything that's on this page. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, video, unfortunately, it's not yet possible to uh, to add an external camera maybe on the tail which uh, points forward and lets you uh, look into the flight direction like the cameras on, an, on, on for example, on the A380. Uh, so we are having a, a, just a, a static image of, of, the, uh, of the cabin interior. And finally, uh, this might be something very interesting for you, is the map mode. So I'm going to increase this a bit. So far, it just shows uh, uh, one of the, uh, the the ground maps of Flight Simulator, but this one has a very special special feature, and that's search. Um, so you click search, you get a list of parking positions or gates. Um, you can select the, the gate or parking position where you want to go. Uh, let me go to parking position 34. You select it and you get it, you see it on the map. So it's, um, oops, click the wrong thing. <laughs> so, um, with the result, you you can you have pretty much have your complete uh, ground map for the airport without needing extra charts. You can easily find the the taxiway um, towards your destination. We don't have taxiway numbers yet or taxiway names. Um, as soon as um, these are uh, can be loaded in a in a in a, in a time that's acceptable, uh, we can add those two. But for now, the, the search function and the, um, the uh, 
all the lines and everything is in, in the display. Okay, so far for the multifunction display, one more, um, this time for the um, engine and warning display. I'm going back a bit. This is controlled by this panel uh, down here. And it, um, uh, it allows you, well, it's, there's a number of, spe of uh, procedures and, um, and checklists included in there. Let me start with a normal checklist. Um, if, let's use before taxi. You get the display of the, uh, the taxi checklist and you can uh, confirm step by step. Once the procedure is completed, it leads you back to the uh, procedure menu. There's also um, the complete list of emergency and, uh, and non-normal procedures. Um, so let's, let's try this. Uh, both DC generators fail. Uh, first is captain takes over. Both DC generators are reset, and then uh, oh, previous choice. So, and then you choose which problem, uh, which result the reset gave you. No recover, no generator was recovered. You choose the first one. Generator was recovered. You choose the second, and uh, then complete the procedure. Uh, good. Of course, there's also situations where uh, and tests where um, these procedures are shown. For example, the engine fire and flight procedure uh, when you use the fire test or the warning for the loop test. And uh, in this case, smoke detection. So there's a whole lot of, of things that um, that you can do. You can pretty much go through all the uh, the pr procedures. The aircraft does not have uh, any failures at this point, though. So um, it's uh, it's more for for looking at than uh, that a system actually fails. <clears throat> yeah. So. My time is almost up or already up. <laughs> we do have Talk one, way too much. <laughs> one good question that, from chat earlier. Um, yeah, for those sure. who are very excited to fly this, maybe don't have a lot of experience, um, do you know yet if there's a, something planned for either video tutorials or a manual that they'll be able to look at? Uh, this is a question for Jörg, I guess. <clears throat> um, well, so the Inibuild guys make awesome videos. Um, Hans is, um, <laughs> I don't think he's, he has the same uh, setups. <laughs> so I think Hans, you were, you were talking about maybe doing a, um, um, a manual, but we need to, we need to take this, we need to take this offline. Honestly, yeah. we don't know yet. I mean, it's, okay. I, I see all this thing also about price point and, and <laughs> maybe that's crazy, but we haven't decided yet. Um, <laughs> I typically, and it was the same with the two to five. I, I let, I let everybody do their work the plane reaches a certain quality bar and then we decide. Mm -hmm. the, the idea here was this is an expert level plane. Hans, I think, has plenty of access to ATR and ATR pilots. I don't know, Hans, you never really talk about yes, this. But yes. You want to chat about this real quick? <coughs> Let's just keep it short because I, I do think we need to move on. <laughs> hmm? Like how many people are on your, are you help, are helping you test uh, the actual? So we have um, uh, about a dozen testers and pilots who uh, who inform us about things. Of course, we have ATR itself, uh, which provided us with uh, lots of data. For example, um, these procedures you saw, they are based of, they use the same XML file that the real aircraft uses. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's really, uh, really precise stuff. And um, 
to be honest, I couldn't I couldn't be any happier about the uh, the support I got from uh, from people you know. Many of you know uh, from from YouTube and so on. Um, so um, this this really went well. Uh, and of course, every day, possible new features come up. Yeah. <laughs> Once you show them something, they get new ideas. That's fair. So, yeah. Uh, lots of compliments in chat for you, Hans. Thank you so yeah. much for, for giving us a brief Thank overview. Thank you all in chat. Yeah, really excited. Really excited to see this plane in the sim. Um, yes. We'll see you again uh, see soon, Hans.